people no longer bound by their non-disclosure agreements. What can you now disclose? Funny story. Moments after I was unceremoniously fired because my tech skills were found to be insufficient, the bosses who fired me demanded to know the whereabouts of a hugely important computer file I had worked on. I refused to help them. I even cited the exact language of the NDA I was compelled to sign. I am prohibited from disclosing details of my employment with anyone, including past and current employees of the company. I expounded, adding so ask someone who works here, because I don't it was a great f you moment that I still cherish 5 years later, but now I think I can disclose the truth. I only hid behind the NDA language because I had no clue where to find their damn computer file or even where to look. I suck with computers. Fired because my tech skills were found to be insufficient to suck with computers. This checks out. The cake cupcake shop I used to work for claimed everything was homemade, but used Pillsbury cake mix as a base. I read a thread I think it was a confessions thread on Ask Reddit, where a woman who ran a super successful home bakery business was literally just using Pillsbury cake mix, and this is how I learned what Pillsbury was as we don't have it in England. She had the odd hack or two and was seriously good at decorating apparently, but she was essentially just using cake mix. She even talked about how she felt like a fraud, got nauseous about going to the grocery store, and hated the sight or taste of cake. My graphic designer best friend won my town's design the centennial logo contest, despite having never set foot in the town. I worked for the radio station, and just did an interview with one of the organizers where he lamented that there weren't very many entries. So I called my friend and said, want in on this? He said, sure. As he lived on the other side of the country at the time, I spent the next day texting him photos of the town for inspiration. Anyway, when he won and they found out he was a professional graphic designer who lived on the other side of the country, they made him and me sign NDAs because the town was afraid people would think they brought in a ringer. I dug up some ancient bones gold, and Mycenaean tombs. I couldn't discuss the finds until the institution who ran the archaeological dig could publish the data. Edit to at, I'm a classics student not the one running the whole dig, but my role in it was very much legal and official lol. We knew to dig there because there was another tomb next to it, and it's located near a big Mycenaean Bronze Age palace. I only dug there for one summer but it was a blast if you're interested in archaeology. You should see if there are any local groups that you can volunteer with. I was a contractor for NASA. I still fully support the agency, but I was extremely bugged when I learned that each separate NASA center, for example, JPL, Kennedy, Ames, Goddard, hides many of its inventions and breakthroughs from the other centers so that when HQ is ready to assign a big mission, and a lot of dollars, to one center, they have a better chance to compete over the others. Look what we invented, Ames can't do this over there, give us the next moon orbiter. The downside is that there is a ton of reinvention and duplicated efforts going on. Sometimes years of work go down the drain when another center does the same thing faster. My perspective was, you will work for NASA, share knowledge collaborate. I was frequently ordered to turn down anything revealing when speaking to other centers. As a lawyer, I viewed a lot of these in tort settlements. The most common use of the NDA is to keep the award amount quiet so everyone won't sue the company hoping to get that sweet, sweet settlement money. I used to do data analysis of revenue management for some big companies. Many companies have no clue about their data or their revenue streams. I'm talking several million dollars of revenue disappearing in the pipeline and no one knowing what happened with it, or even caring really. There were multiple times I had to inform clients that we had huge gaps in their costs and we needed to find the missing numbers somewhere in order to make our final reports correct and was met with a, paraphrased, reply, just sprinkle the missing costs over the existing one, we just want the final total to be correct. All the companies cared about if the amount of money they have at the end of the year is higher than at the beginning and anything that happens in between is inconsequential. I objected at first to my bosses, saying that what we were doing was incorrect, but they said to just do as the client said. In the end, I got disillusioned and whenever our clients came with requests that made no mathematical or logical sense, I just execute as requested and let their analysts figure out later that the analysis they paid 6 figures for was basically nonsense. I didn't care. 
because I had documentation of all their requests and my objections which were thoroughly ignored. I had a few cases where clients came back disgruntled several months down the line after some in-house analyst had done a deep dive of their data and came up with objections that I had pointed out months before. I'd usually dig up the relevant emails and clear my name. My choice of action was to tell them to pound sand. But my boss is always bent over backwards for clients. So we'd have to do the cleanup I anticipated. In the end I learned most of our economy is held together by duct tape and wishful thinking. At most 10% of people working at big companies are competent and carry the bulk of the work and rarely are the competent ones the ones in charge. Edit. I want to clarify something for everyone who's talking about embezzlement and people lining their pockets. I can assure you that in the data I was working on, this was very unlikely. The money streams I was analyzing went to other companies as costs. So if they had literally disappeared, someone would notice. This missing money was really just a case of utter incompetence. People just too lazy or stupid to properly keep track of what goes where. I'm sure that if we got all the data from partnering companies, we would eventually be able to track everything precisely. We were unfortunately limited to whatever data our clients provided and we would rarely get data from other companies as they are quite privy about sharing it with third parties. This rant was not about corruption but rather incompetence. You know NDAs are only good if you have the money to sue? Worked with a company that didn't pay me. So I told them their NDA didn't apply. They threatened to sue. My response you can't even afford to pay me. You sure as hell can't afford to sue. They also don't extend to keeping you from reporting illegal activity to the justice system. Some places may try to make people believe that and may even try to imply it in the NDA. But it has no legal standing. Well this is already public knowledge. And they forgot to have me sign an NDA anyway. But Savannah College of Art and Design's Ombudsman Sophia Bagnoli, the independent person who's supposed to represent students in cases of unfair treatment by the school, married one of the school's vice presidents to and is now Sophia Aletto. It's definitely a conflict of interest but she's still serving as independent ombudsman, and currently refusing to help students get any kind of refund now that all their classes are online and they don't have access to the expensive equipment their expensive tuition is supposed to be paying for. When I was fired from Auntie Anne's in 2010, I signed a 10-year non-compete NDA contract, promising not to detail the baking secrets or work for another pretzel establishment. Well that ended this year so now I can run out and start a pretzel store because the secret I was keeping was making pretzels literally requires two products. One of them being water and the other a large bag of pretzel meal dust powder. Quite literally anyone with $2,500 can start a pretzel stand and make perfectly fine pretzels. It's not difficult whatsoever. I think I'm finally ready to let the world know my secret. If you've ever used very sight the loading spinners you see when the report loads aren't waiting for anything. People kept complaining that reports were coming back too fast. So it must not be working right. It doesn't take long to complete a few hundred Google searches simultaneously. So the loading spinner just makes you wait a few seconds longer so it feels like more is happening. So glad to finally get that off my chest. Bonus fact. I also added applying phlebotinum, reticulating splines, and looking for cat memes as random loading messages. But they wouldn't let me do harassing at Ted Crows on Twitter. The owner of the company is an absolute psycho. They have been trying to hire developers for years now. And despite paying really well, they can't keep them. I quit after 3 days. I was trying to help out on a high priority bug on my third day. When I said all the requests to X endpoint are failing to which he replied I see 1 out of 500 requests succeeding. Does that sound like all to you? He then called a company wide all hands meeting. And proceeded to tell everyone how important it is that we all speak carefully. And that we don't need idiots like me lying to the company making it harder to diagnose issues. I told him to go F himself and quit on the spot. Turns out the company has a big history of this. My boss who had been there for two weeks had tried to quit the week prior, but was convinced to stay on to meet me. He left a few days after me. Apparently a few people got together and tried to tell the owner that he needs to watch how he talks to people. And he blew up on them about it too. I later heard that I was something like the 10th person to quit within their first month in a row. The sad truth is that the dude actually seems pretty smart. 
but has been acting like a megalomaniac while he pisses his money away and abuses his employees that are for whatever reason unwilling to leave. This is juicy. I like this one. Oh. I forgot one other part of this story that makes it really funny. They offered a quitting bonus thing since they were having so much trouble even getting people in the door for interviews due to a ton of bad company reviews. They had in the contract that you would be able to get a few thousand if you left and weren't fired within the first 90 days. Apparently it was the owner's idea. Well when I told the owner to f off, I quickly sent an email announcing my resignation. To which he replied all saying let's have a phone conversation about this. It would be highly premature for you to leave on your third day. I declined. The quitting bonus was contingent on signing a non-disparagement agreement. A few days after I left, I get an email from the owner's right hand man sending me a link to an ex-company Facebook group where past employees go to network or something. I had no interest in that, so I declined. But I'm convinced that it was an attempt to get me to break my non-disparagement agreement. If I joined the group and talked sh about the company, he would try to sue for the quitting bonus back. I don't know for sure that's what it was, but it just stinks of that nut job trying to be clever. Also, that quitting bonus is no longer offered on their recruiting page. Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA will have microtransactions. The NDA was signed in 2016. I was getting more and more worried as the release date kept getting closer and then it happened. The backlash was so strong that EA went down in the history books as most downvoted comment in Reddit's history. I worked at a small bakery in New York City when I was younger. Every morning the bakery would take their day old cupcakes and deliver them to a tour company that did sex in the city tours. The tour company would pass our cupcakes off as cupcakes from Magnolia, a significantly much more popular bakery. McDonald's made me sign a NDA regarding a robbery that took place during a graveyard shift. They made me take a refined polygraph test because they thought my ex and I were involved due to the simple fact that I had stopped by that day to pick up some documents. I was a manager. I had business to do. F you. Mick Miller. Hell. The first day of my first job was at a Hardee's. We were robbed. It was really obvious my manager had set it up as there was over a grand in my register and she wouldn't swap out the till. Then when the robber was running off she yells out wait, you forgot this and gets the $50 and $100 bills from under the drawer, then pretended to faint. After the police interviewed us they just left, she expected me to finish my shift and I just laughed and walked out never to return. I had to sign an NDA to work at this tech company, and I'm still waiting to accidentally overhear something cool so I can feel special for knowing something important but being legally barred from disclosing it. This is something I could spend a lot of time diving into, but the subprime lending company I used to work for as a software engineer spent a lot of time and effort manipulating the UX of our various applications to encourage customers to accept loan terms that were not necessarily in their best interest. I quit pretty quickly after realizing that the people in charge had very little interest in actually supporting us in making a product that would be better for our customers. I worked at a gym. And in the showers there was yellow shampoo and blue body wash and pump dispensers. I found out that the only difference between the two soaps was the color. I used to work for a large gas station chain. I worked at its warehouse where it creates a lot of the donuts. The room was really hot so we were always sweating. There's some machines where the donuts get glazed in chocolate. They're these small machines they look almost like a BBQ grill. They always wanted us to be super fast glazing the donuts. Working in a hot room and working at super fast speeds it was natural for a lot of people's sweat to just drip in the chocolate underneath us. Never eat the chocolate donuts from a gas station. Honestly if the worst thing in those donuts is human sweat, I'm impressed. In the it world, it is often that the piece of internal software or system that gives your company an edge is not quite as huge a deal as it seems. Often it is not much more than a couple of technologies mashed together to automate things in a way nobody else is doing yet, and those things are fiercely guarded. I had cases where people saw stuff in action and tried to replicate it but could not because they were missing just one small piece. The head shop. Smoke shop. I used to work at sold whippets, nitrous cartridges, behind the counter under the guise of being cake ingredients. All someone had to do was walk in and say they were looking to bake a cake. I'm not sure if they still do it but I wouldn't be surprised. 
Be careful if your pet needs specific shampoos supplied by a pet smart grooming salon. Last I worked there, they weren't letting us order anything and we had to try to track down shampoos from other stores before they'd let us buy anything. Meaning if your dog needed hypoallergenic shampoo or you were paying for an expensive upgrade, it's very possible that some of the products were unavailable. Oftentimes we would have the Firminator shampoo but no conditioner, and the conditioner is what reduces the shedding so we'd just have to use regular dog conditioner. We couldn't stop selling these packages because that's what they base our performance on. I was considered a bad salon leader cause I wouldn't push these products we didn't have. Also teeth brushing is absolutely useless there. It does not stop your dog's mouth from decaying at all and you'd be better off buying an enzyme toothpaste from your vet and brushing your dog's teeth every day. The toothpaste we had basically was just to make your dog's breath seem better for a little while. Oh and the reason a bunch of dogs died there is because people were likely not following the rules when handling dogs. Almost every salon I worked at had people like that. They aren't supposed to be kenling your flat faced dogs anymore because of it. They're also supposed to have a set of eyes on your dog at all time when they are tethered to the floor. Someone obviously neglected to do that a few months ago when that bulldog passed away. The training program their groomers go through is not very good either. They have 4 weeks to basically become full fledged groomers and a week is spent on computers. There's never enough dogs to practice all of the cuts they should know. They also don't kick out trainees who repeatedly cut dogs. They try to normalize nicking dogs so they don't have to fire people. But there is no reason dogs should be getting hurt at a grooming salon if they follow the rules they are supposed to. The biggest problem is they barely pay anything to help you up keep your tools and dull tools cause injuries. With what they pay people usually can't afford to sharpen most of their tools so you're stuck with the bare minimum.